Have you ever looked up and seen a massive airplane? I mean, a really, really big one. It just sort of hangs there in the sky, defying gravity. It's a properly amazing sight, isn't it? There's something about huge machines, especially ones that fly. They capture our imagination like nothing else. We humans, we're not meant to fly, not naturally anyway. So when we build something enormous that can soar above the clouds, well, that's just brilliant. It's a testament to our cleverness, our ambition. These colossal aircraft are more than just transport. They are symbols, symbols of what we can achieve when we put our minds to it. Think about it, the sheer scale, the power needed to get them off the ground, the incredible engineering that stops them from, well, falling apart midair. It's mind-boggling stuff, really. And it's not just us grown-ups who are fascinated. Kids love them too. They point, they gasp. Big planes are just universally cool. They make you dream of faraway places and incredible adventures. The bigger the plane, the bigger the wow factor. It's simple maths that. We see a jumbo jet, and we're impressed. But then, you hear whispers. Tales of even bigger machines. Er. Right, let's get straight to it. The aircraft we're talking about, the undisputed king of colossal cargo carriers. It was called the Antonov An-225, but it had a much more poetic nickname, Maria. That's Ukrainian for dream, and what a dream it was. This wasn't just any large aircraft. For a long time, it was the largest aircraft in the world, by a long shot in many respects. Imagine the biggest plane you've ever seen. Now imagine something even bigger, that's the Maria. It was a strategic airlift cargo aircraft, that's a fancy way of saying it was designed to carry really, really heavy stuff. And lots of it, it was designed and built by the Antonov Design Bureau in the Soviet Union. Back in the 1980s, a time of grand projects and, let's be honest, showing off a bit. The Cold War was still on, and big machines meant big power. The Maria was certainly a statement, a massive six-engine statement that could haul almost anything, anywhere. Only one and 225, the Maria was ever fully completed and flown. Think about that, just one. That made it incredibly special, unique even. There was a second one partially built, but it never got its wings, so to speak. So, the Maria stood alone, a solitary giant. So, why build such an enormous aeroplane? What was the point? Well, the Maria wasn't built just to break records, or to look impressive at air shows, though it did both of those things very well. No, it had a very specific, very ambitious job. It was designed for the Soviet space program, that's right, space. This giant was meant to help conquer the final frontier. How cool is that? A plane built to carry spaceships. It sounds like something from a science fiction film. The main task for the Maria was to transport the Buran space shuttle. The Soviet Union's answer to the American space shuttle. The Buran orbiter needed to be carried from its assembly plants to the Baikonur Cosmodrome, the launch site, and sometimes it needed to be piggybacked on top of an aircraft just like the Americans did with their Boeing 747 shuttle carrier aircraft, but the Buran was big and heavy, so they needed a very, very big carrier. Enter the Maria. The Maria was also designed to carry the Energia rocket boosters. Again, massive components for the space program. Now building the Maria wasn't exactly a walk in the park. It was a massive engineering challenge. Think about the forces involved, the weight it had to lift, the stresses on the airframe. The engineers at Antonov were properly clever. They took the design of an already big plane, the An-124 Ruslan, and then they made it even bigger, stretched the fuselage, added extra engines, redesigned the tail. It was a serious bit of work. One of the most striking features was its six, yes, six, turbofan engines, Ivchenko Progress D-18. T engines, to be precise, each one capable of producing over 51,000 pounds of thrust. That's a lot of oomph. You need that kind of power to get 640 tons off the ground. That was its maximum takeoff weight, 640 tons. That's like, well, a lot of elephants, or a small building. Getting all those engines to work together efficiently and reliably was a feat in itself. Then there was the landing gear, 32 wheels in total. Imagine trying to change a tire on that thing, or all 32. All right, folks, section five, size matters. Just how big was this behemoth, the Maria? We've mentioned before that the Maria was big, but just how big are we talking here? Let's try to put it into perspective for you. Its length was a whopping 84 meters. That's longer than the first flight by the Wright brothers. Considerably longer, actually. Imagine lining up nine double-decker buses. The Maria was longer than that. 
It was a truly colossal machine, and standing next to it, you'd feel tiny, absolutely dwarfed by its sheer scale. It wasn't just an aircraft, it was like a landmark when it was parked. Now its wingspan, as we mentioned, was 88.4 meters. To give you another idea, the Statue of Liberty, from heel to torch, is about 93 meters. So the Maria's wingspan was almost as wide as Lady Liberty is tall. That's incredible, isn't it? It had the largest wingspan of any aircraft in operational service. Sure, there have been planes with wider wingspans like Howard Hughes' H-4 Hercules, the Spruce Goose. But that only flew once, very briefly. The Maria flew regularly, for decades. And its height? It stood 18.1 meters tall. That's like a six-story building. You'd need a pretty tall ladder to clean the windows on that cockpit or to reach the top of that twin tail. The cargo hold itself was enormous, over 43 meters long, 6.4 meters wide, and 4.4 meters high. You could fit the entire fuselage of a Boeing 737 inside it, with room to spare. Section 6, Power and Prowess. What the Maria could actually do. Right, so, it was massive. But could it do the job? Absolutely. The Maria wasn't just about size, it was about capability. Its primary role initially was space-related, but after the collapse of the Soviet Union and the cancellation of the Buran program, the Maria found a new lease of life. It became the ultimate heavy-lift cargo freighter. If you had something incredibly large and incredibly heavy to move, the Maria was your only option. It was the go-to plane for impossible loads. It could carry up to 250 tons of cargo internally, or 200 tons externally on its back. That's a phenomenal amount. Think of heavy industrial equipment, giant generators for power stations, enormous wind turbine blades, even other aircraft fuselages or military vehicles. The Maria transported them all. It set numerous world records for airlifted payload, over 240 records in fact, including airlifting the heaviest single piece of cargo ever, weighing nearly 188 tons. That's like lifting 30 African elephants. Its range was impressive too, considering its size and thirst. It could fly up to 15,400 kilometers when empty. Section 7 Clash of the Titans Maria versus Other Giants So, the Maria was the biggest. But how did it stack up against other famous large aircraft? Let's have a quick comparison. The Boeing 747, the Queen of the Skies, a truly iconic jumbo jet. The Maria was significantly longer and had a much wider wingspan, and it could carry far more weight. The 747 is big. The Maria was in a different league. It made the 747 look, well, almost normal-sized, which is saying something. Then there's the Airbus A380, the double-decker superjumbo, the largest passenger airliner ever built. Again, a massive machine. The A380 is very tall and very wide, but the Maria was still longer, and its maximum takeoff weight was higher. The A380 is designed to carry lots of people in comfort. The Maria was designed to carry lots of very heavy things, different jobs, different designs, but in terms of sheer raw size and lifting power, the Maria had the edge. What about the legendary Spruce Goose? Section 8, Maria's Quirky Charms Fun Facts About the Legend. Every great machine has its quirks and cool facts. The Maria was no exception. For starters, its name, Maria, meaning dream. It perfectly captured the ambition behind it, and the almost dreamlike quality of seeing such a colossal machine fly. It was a name that resonated with people all over the world, a symbol of hope and aspiration especially in its later years as a commercial freighter connecting nations. It was more than just a registration number, here's a good one. The Maria had a unique split tail design, two vertical fins. This wasn't just for looks, it was essential for carrying external cargo on its back, like the Buran shuttle. A single central tail fin would have been caught in the turbulent air flowing off the shuttle so they split it. Clever thinking. This twin tail also made the Maria instantly recognizable, a distinctive silhouette against the sky. And remember those 32 wheels? The main landing gear units could actually steer. This helped the Maria make turns on the ground. Section 9. A Legacy in the Clouds. The Maria's Enduring Impact. The story of the Antonov on 25 Maria is one of triumph and sadly, tragedy. For over 30 years it graced the skies, a symbol of engineering prowess and international cooperation in its later commercial life. It transported everything from emergency aid to critical industrial components. It played a vital role in global logistics. It wasn't just an aircraft, it was a lifeline. 
a unique asset that could do things no other plane could. Its contribution was immense. Then in February 2022, the unthinkable happened. During the conflict in Ukraine, the Maria was destroyed at its home base at Hostomel Airport, near Kyiv. It was a devastating blow, not just for Ukraine, where it was a national treasure, but for aviation enthusiasts and professionals worldwide. The dream was grounded, the giant was gone. It was a sad day for aviation history. The loss of such an iconic and unique aircraft was felt deeply by many. But is this the end of the Maria's story? Perhaps not entirely, there have been talks, discussions about rebuilding it, or completing the second unfinished On-225 airframe. It would be a monumental task, costly and complex. But the dream of seeing a Maria fly again is a powerful one.